Back in 2022, I decided to pick up a set of laser rangefinding binoculars. The reason being is that I planned on shooting NRL Hunter matches, and I have a set of standalone binoculars in the forms of these NL Pure 12x42s from Swarovski, and then a Sig Kilo 8K standalone laser rangefinder. But an all-in-one unit's better for speed and ease of use because if you're already looking for a target, it's might as well just get a distance from that same unit. So I decided to get a low risk option and that would be the Sig Kilo 6K HD. And the reason why I call these low risk is because I have an NRA instructor discount with Sig and so they were a lower cost. And I felt that even though I may not like them, it wasn't a huge expenditure comparatively speaking. And so I wrote a review on these and having used them, I think they are a great shooter tool, great laser range finder, great ballistic solver because it has applied ballistics built in, but it is a poor binocular optical wise. Optical clarity is poor, leaves much to be desired. And compared to something that I already have, like these 12x42 NL Pures, these are, you know, underwhelming. That being said, I wanted something close to this with a laser range finder built in and therefore I started to do some research and I ended up selecting the Swarovski Optic EL Range 42 in the 10 by 42 form, which you see here. And so, I mean, I was debating between this and the Leica GeoVid Pro and I ended up selecting this because I started reading some other feedback from other people about the speed of the GeoVid Pro internal software. And I said, you know what, let's just go ahead and go with this Roski and hopefully they work for me. It was a huge risk. But that being said, I am very happy with them. And let's go ahead and dive into the pros. First off is the optical clarity. This is a great binocular in terms of optical clarity. It is just a hair short of the NL Pure's. It's not quite the same as an NL Pure. Obviously the NL Pure has other things going for it like huge field of view in its class, but the optical clarity of the EL range is excellent. I would say that the main reason why it doesn't keep up because NL Pures have, I think they have different glass, which separates them from the ELs, not to mention, you do have an LED display in here, which we'll get into later in this discussion. And you add an LED display as an extra layer of glass, other things going on so you can degrade your image. These do have what's called Swaro vision or field flattening uh, elements. And so what that means is you it, re, it eliminates that pin cushioning effect that you get from barrel distortion or circular distortion in a round lens. Some people don't like that. They think it, it destroys their depth perception or depth of field. I don't feel that way. I prefer to have just that perfect image with no distortion, but that's just me. Uh, as far as... Uh, the other pros of this binocular. I was at first hesitant whether or not this laser rangefinder would be good because SIGs are very well known for it, Leica's are very well known for it, and Swarovski really don't hear much about them. However, the second I took them out of the box and started using them, I was amazed by how good the laser rangefinder is. First off, it's dead on the reticle. When you put the reticle on something and hit it, it, it it's accurate, it's, it's right on that. So the laser's lined up. You don't get that same experience with SIGs. I know a lot of people will claim that their SIGs are off. These are off. They're like slightly offset from the reticle. My e my uh, SIG Kilo 8Ks are also offset from the reticle. Although you can adjust them with software. It lets you adjust it a little bit, but it's still, still offset. These are dead on, which is great. And as far as the accuracy of that laser, what's also good is the fact that when you're trying to pin, you know, get a small object compared to everything around it, it actually is relatively accurate getting on there. I've always, always had problems with SIGs. I'm always having to use like the constant ranging, like holding down to see if I can get that because I'm always unsure whether or not it's ranging the correct thing, either behind it, under it, or next to it. And these, I don't have that problem. And I was looking up the beam divergence data or how wide the beam is or how large the beam is. And Swarovski sent me a document that indicated like had a diagram in there. It didn't have the width of it, but it is a 1.2 MRAD tall laser. And I don't know, the diagram may not be to scale. It's very thin. I would expect it to be thin. But compared to a SIG, which is well known for their laser range finders or their lasers, 
I believe the 6K and the 10K have a 1.5 MRAD tall laser and the 8K monocular laser rangefinder has a 1.2 MRAD tall laser. And so these are on par with the 8Ks, but even then I feel these are more accurate than the 8Ks in terms of getting the laser on something and giving you a, the, giving you a day, the distance, but you know that you're hitting that exact target. So I feel that these are, these are, this is a great laser rangefinder. Uh, surprised. As far as uh, the laser from rangefinder as well, it's fast. Not only is it accurate, but it's fast. I hit the button less than a second, I get data. I'm so, I was very surprised how fast it was. And, you know, coming from looking at other rangefinders, there is a little bit of delay. Some of them worse than others, but these are incredibly fast. So that's also another pro there. The onboard ballistic solver, which I was one of the main skepticisms I had about the EL Range 42s is how good the solver is, is because they don't use applied ballistics, which everyone likes, or geo ballistics, which other people like. Swarovski uses an in-house solver. It is possible they might be licensing something for free from someone else because they didn't want to pay the applied ballistics licensing, which I, from what I understand is a little bit expensive. But from my discussions with Swarovski reps, it is likely they they licensed something or got something that was based on algorithms or whatever that's kind of open source maybe because I don't think they, I, it sounds like they don't want to not be in control of their software and that's why they didn't go apply ballistics aside from maybe licensing costs. So I was reading some feedback of other people and they claimed that their solver was pretty spot on. And so, you know, I was willing to take the risk there and thankfully the solver is accurate. I went to the range after I put my data in here, put targets at 300, 400, 500, 600, and I distanced each, I laced each one because they weren't exactly 300, right? Or 400, 500, they're off a little bit, but I laced, I got a distance, it, I got the data out of it and told me how many mils drop and they were all on the water line. 300, three shots, water line. 400, three shots, water line. 500, three shots, water line. 600, three shots, water line. It is dead on. So I am very surprised by how good how, that the fact that the solver is accurate. So I have full faith in the solver. And then one other pro I'll mention here is the build quality. The build quality of Swarovski is excellent. I mean, everything about it, you know, it's a very well built binocular. The bridge feels excellent. The eye cups extend with nice tactile feel. The diopters are excellent. You have a good, nice consistent focus knob, focus wheel. Really can't complain about anything here. And great build quality. Talked about some pros here. It's not a perfect binocular, laser rangefinder binocular rather, because I don't think there are any perfect laser rangefinder binocular and I'll talk about it at the end. But there are some cons here. And the first con I'll mention is the basic, ba the very basic LED or the heads up display. And so you have an LED inside the barrel, which gives you your readout. You have, you get a distance on target, you laser target, tells you your distance, gives you your drop data, whatever. <clears throat> the EL ranges have a very, I want to call it, I don't want to say it's antiquated, but it's very old school looking. And you only get two lines of data. It's got your very basic, you know, your, you know, if I've never seen like a dot matrix type, almost like display, and it gives you like, you know, the eight kind of look there. And it, you know, lights up part of this segment of the eight, you know, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, those little lines. That's kind of what it looks like for the, for the characters. So not a very, it's not a very advanced display, unlike the 10K or the 8K kilos, which have that active matrix OLED display, which is phenomenal. <clears throat> but that being said, that's not the worst part of it is. Uh, the worst part of the basic display is the fact you only get two lines of data. What does that mean? You get distance for sure. But the second thing is you only get one other data point and for me, I selected in this, you know, when I configured it to give me the elevation drop or adjustment in mils. But you can adjust that so that it'll give you for the second line, either elevation, elevation drop in MOA, elevation drop in inches, I think, and, or a number of clicks that you need, or the angle on target in degrees, or the compass data, because that's a built-in compass. 
But it's unfortunate you can't have more than one data point displayed at the same time or even cycled because it doesn't cycle through it. Like the SIG Kilo 6 case, which gives you distance, elevation, then it cycles to the next screen, distance, windage, then next screen, I think distance and come what the other third point is, but it cycles through. And so it's unfortunate that you can't have, for example, angle or in degrees, because if I'm shooting at a angle target or a dis that's a target that's above or below my my flat, you know, not level with me, it will give me the correct distance because it modifies that. However, sometimes you want to know the angle so you can compare it to a Kestrel or your drop chart or something else. So it's unfortunate you can't get that data at the same time. So that's kind of a con there. Another con is going to be the the uh, form factor. It's larger than average, I would say. You can see here, compared to these NL pures, it's kind of taller. And it's going to be wider as well. So if you can see here, it's got, you know, from the, I don't want to call it the height, but yeah, it's, it's from the top of the bottom, it's going to be, you know, larger. That's because you have these humps or bumps, if you want to call it, for the electronics in each barrel. And if you compare it to the 6Ks, just significantly larger. It is what it is. Um, it's going to be, it's only slightly heavier than NL Pures. I think it's only three or four ounces heavier. It's just that bulk, it feels bulky. And it, in my final harness on my chest, it's very a very tight fit. My one complaint there is just that, that form factor, especially coming from the NL Pures, which have that nice, sleek, tapered barrel design, which fits so good in the hand. Uh, that's one of my complaints about it, if anything. The phone app is very bare bones. That's another con. So Applied Ballistics and the SIG Kilo series have a great app system, in my opinion. The Swarovski Optic app called the EL Range Configurator is okay. It works. I have no problems. It connects easily. You know, you just turn on Bluetooth on your EL ranges. It detects it quickly syncs quickly no complaints there but the phone app only allows you to have three gun profiles in the app stored which is pretty low compared to the sig app which i think i don't even know how many i think i have right now i have like 10 i think i have 10 profiles in my sig app on my phone but you can only have three gun profiles and then it's very bare bones as far as the variable data because you can only set site the site height over bore you don't even put twist rate which i was surprised and then for the ammo data, you can put in your ballistic coefficient, G1 or G7. You can put in the bullet weight. I believe you put diameter. I'm not entirely sure. And then muzzle velocity, and that's it. You don't put twist rate. And I was surprised by that. And amazingly enough, it does work. So I'm not entirely sure if that's even necessary. But they're dead on. I'm sure there might be some more advanced things coming from extreme long range where this might not do well and where applied ballistics might do better because it factors in a ton of other ton of other variables. Spin drift, you know, whatever. But it is a very bare bones app, although it does work. But I will say, we'll call it a con, it is a very bare bones app. The last con, well, one other con I'll mention is the tripod mount. It doesn't have one. You can get one put in, I think. It requires some disassembly, but basically there is no tripod adapter built in. I can try to use a Cinch LR on here. It does fairly fit over here, but it looks kind of chintzy and it does hold, but I just don't like the look of it. And it adds even more bulk if you add a Cinch LR because it's even thicker. So I didn't run one. And I just rest it on a bag when I'm on a tripod on a tack table. And then the last con I'll mention is the price. It is an expensive binocular, comparatively speaking. It is $39.99 US manufacturer suggested retail price. So I'm not, not $39.99, it's $3,999 or $4,000. It's not cheap. And the NL Pures are cheaper than this or less expensive. It is an investment and it's very high risk, I would say. So it's hard to recommend this if you're not willing to spend that price and take the risk, it's it's a very difficult ask of somebody. But that being said, I am quite happy and content with these laser, laser range finding binoculars. I feel they are phenomenal. 
other than the fact that it does have some deficiencies and I was willing to accept those deficiencies. As I said before, there is no perfect laser range finding binoculars. They all make a sacrifice somewhere. Six kilos, the 6K, then 10K, 8K laser range finder, which I also have in my pocket here, this binocular, they're renowned for their laser range finder. They're renowned for their applied ballistics integration. And the 8K and the 10K, which I don't have the 10K, but these are renowned for their displays. The active matrix OLED display is phenomenal, but you sacrifice optical clarity and optical quality. Are you willing to sacrifice that? Then if you are, I would just go with the Kilo system. Other people are not, and so you're looking at other options. There's the Leica Geovid Pros, there's that Revic, which I don't know the name of the, or the model number. There's the Vortex Fury AB5000, which are getting some good word of mouth, which have, all, should, all of those should have better optical quality than the SIG series. However, I wanted, I, I am prioritizing optical clarity, first and foremost. And obviously you want a good laser rangefinder. Without a good laser rangefinder, it's pointless to get something with great optical quality. However, the fact that these have a good laser rangefinder, a good ballistic solver, I think these are the choice for me. I think the only thing I would have, might have done differently is gone with the EL Range 32s, which were announced a couple months prior to me buying these. I thought about those, and the only reason I didn't go with the 32s is because of the exit people. You're gonna lose a little bit of low light performance, and from what I've been told, it's not that bad from people who own the 32s. However, I didn't want to take the risk, but when I handled them at SHOT Show and I saw the form factor and how small they were, I think they were about as small as these 6Ks, maybe slightly larger, but the, what they eliminated is the hump or the bump on the left barrel and they only have one and even then it's still small and therefore handling those i was thinking man should i have bought these or should i have acquired those instead and i don't know it's it's 70 30 i would still go with these so it's a it's a hard decision there anyway that was my choice i have an article that i also published on my blog at okfj.net discussing my thought process in a little bit of a review of these binoculars. Therefore, I recommend reading that if you like to read. And if you have any other questions about the EL Range 42s, definitely reach out to me, comment in the video commentary, and I'll try to answer your questions.